this is actually like the most intense story that like I've read and like it is very sad. Going through the little ritual, I just started to get this gut feeling that we were doing something wrong. But after she said, oh, I bet this ghost can't do And then that's when we heard the thud. Obviously, Colby lost his life. And then Dalton was in a coma for a few weeks. Um, I have this and then um, I have a big scar on my shoulder. One of the books that he gave me, he said was written by an entity, not a real person. Oh, whoa, whoa, where are the books? Where are the books? Where are the books? Where are the books? Um, sincerely, thank you all so much for coming out tonight, joining us here at Bobby Mackey's. Uh, we were here two years ago. I believe it was two years and ago. And I am yeah. still not healed from our last visit. Because <laughs> the bull? Yeah, if anyone saw that video, I uh, tore my groin, re tore my groin, riding that fing bull. Yeah. Around the corner. And uh, I'll say this in the PG version uh, I thought that I popped my cat ball. <laughs> He thought he burst a nut, but not in like the pleasant way. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It was the only investigation where both of us were just like, <laughs> is there anyone over here? You are? I can't walk that far. Uh, can you we're come sorry. to me, please? <laughs> yeah. Next investigation, we'll get to you. Yeah. Um, so people in the audience have submitted stories. We've chosen a few of them uh, to read tonight. And then after reading those stories, we will bring that person on stage to talk a little bit more about it. We actually have one story, the first story we're going to read tonight, that we've actually read before, but they weren't there that night. Yeah. So we read the whole story, probably one of the craziest stories we've ever heard, and then they weren't in the audience, mm -hmm. which was really weird because the story was about a car accident, and then they didn't show up, and we're like, this is weird. Corey even said, I wonder if they got into a car accident. We found out they did. So we found out that the story that we read, which is about a very tragic, traumatic car accident, yeah, very that person story. then did not show up to Waverly Hills that night, us under the assumption, and then they wrote in, and it literally starts with, I got into a car accident that night. Yeah. So we're going to talk to them about that story. It's, it's a really heavy one, um, and it's just a very bizarre, universal kind of, universe kind of thing yeah. that we want to talk about. So before we get into the heavier stuff, let's play this stupid... Game. Yeah, we are erasing all evidence of this evening. Um, <laughs> everyone will be asked to turn in their phones upon exiting. <laughs> where we will delete all of your Instagram stories, your Snapchats, <laughs> and we will be burning this hard drive that we are recording to right now. <laughs> the evidence of this evening will never exist. In fact, we aren't <laughs> here. <laughs> okay, so seriously though, this story is like... I read this at... It was Waverly, right? Waverly Hill. And like, this is actually like... The most intense story that like I've read and like it is very sad. So it starts like this. Hi, I'm Whitney. So fun fact, my fiance Sean and I were actually supposed to come see you guys up at Waverly Hills on August 15th. However, on the way up there, his car broke down about halfway there. He's never had troubles with his car before. So we were bamboozled. We tried everything to try and get up there. Between calling family, friends, and even the cops to try and jump the car. It would not start. We were absolutely devastated. We have been watching you guys for six plus years and had bought the tickets the day the tickets went up for sale. We firmly believe something did not want us to come up there. Now, on to my story. Backstory, my friends Kobe, Haley, Dalton, and I started hanging around the end of October. Dalton and I worked together. Haley and Kobe were dating. All three of them lived in the same apartment, so I would come over and hang out with all three of them. Now, as any small town, freshly adults would, we were bored and decided to drive around, blaring music and just having fun. This was November 16th, 2020. We decided to go to the Colville Covered Bridge. It wasn't too far from where we were as it was just past the county line in Bourbon County. I have always loved haunted places. Growing up, my mother basically raised me on Bobby Mackey's and Waverly, watching ghost adventures and even reading books. So I was down. The bridge was known to be haunted. So we went. As we were driving, I took a video with the caption, if we die, we die with the real ones. 
I would later regret posting that. Once we got there, one of my friends suggested we do the ritual you're supposed to do at 3 a.m. It was one of those little games where you flash your light, honk your horn, etc. So they decided to do it. That saying went, if you did it and then turned your car off and sat, you would see a lady in front of your car or someone hanging behind your car from the roof. Once we get there, we drive through it to just look at the graffiti that had been sprayed on it for over the years. Once we went out, we turned around and headed back through it. I got an odd feeling when we went in the second time. As we drove through, we stopped in the middle of the bridge and put the car in park. We all got ready and started. Honk a few times, flash the lights, turn the lights off completely, and shut the car off. We sat in silence for a minute, and then they all started laughing. I knew nothing was going to happen. This was stupid. The ghost can't do sh**. I bet this bridge isn't even haunted. I immediately had a horrible feeling. Kobe then tried to start the car. Nothing. He tried again. Nothing. Then, out of nowhere, we hear a loud slam behind the car. We all shot our heads back, trying to see what that was. We all were terrified. I then turned forward to talk to the others, and then I see it. A woman in a long white dress standing right in front of the car. I have never screamed so loud in my life. The others then shot their heads forward, and we all started freaking out. Kobe finally gets the car to start and turn the lights on. Nothing was there, and we drove out so fast. The next few days leading up to the accident was weird. Dalton and Haley were having many family and job problems, while Kobe and I were filled with anger. Kobe would lash out at us and would slam doors. The tiniest things set him off. I was also like that. I felt so enraged, but I kept it in as much as possible. But I also had this sadness building up as well. This led to having a falling out with my fiance and we broke up. We are happily back together now. I also kept having reoccurring nightmares. They all dealt with a car accident. Whether it was my friends, family, or just me, I also had some different ones, but those were the ones I remember. I barely slept those days. The day of the accident was bad. We all had our own events that happened, whether it was a bad day at work, arguing with each other, or just a bad day in general. Me and my fiance were trying to work things out, so I went over and saw some of his family. Afterwards, I went over to my aunt's house and my brother's. My cousin and I took some pictures to give to my grandmother for Christmas. It was just a stressful day. Once I left there around 12 a.m., I didn't want to go home. So I texted my friends and went over. Once I was there, we all talked and decided to go for a drive. We all got in the car, and before we headed out, we went to a gas station so Kobe could introduce Haley to his sister. After that, we headed out. I fell asleep not long after. Once I woke up, they were talking about heading back. We checked our phones, and it was 2 a.m., and we were about an hour away from home. So we turned back. Kobe started to speed. Now, Kobe did speed often, but not like this. This was a whole new level. I didn't know this until I talked with Haley a few weeks after the wreck, but Kobe had been acting weird the whole drive. He was quiet and just acting off. Not even five minutes later, I see a sharp curve ahead of us. Between the speed and the angle of this curve, I knew we weren't making it. I was correct. We went completely straight. It was like Kobe didn't even try and make it. We went off. I shot my arms in front of me. 
and braced myself. The car had met parallel with a fence and it came through the front of the car and the back passenger side hit a tree. I can't even describe the sound of this. All I can say is it was so loud. I have some hearing loss because of it. Once the car stopped, I opened my eyes and my life changed. The fence that had come through the front had killed Kobe on impact. Haley was left with a concussion and a black eye. Dalton was unconscious with brain damage and a broken arm. I got the aftermath of the fence that didn't hit Kobe. It went right through my left wrist into my left shoulder. My arm was only connected by skin and muscle. It was not connected by bone. My shoulder was 70% severed off. My rotator cuff was shattered along with other broken shoulder bones. I thought I was going to lose my arm, but luckily I didn't. I spent three weeks and one day in the hospital. Haley went home. Dalton was in the hospital in a coma for a while. And once he woke up, he couldn't remember anything, but he had to learn how to walk, talk, everything all over again as well as being blind and one eye. That is my story. Is, uh, is Whitney here? Come on up, Whitney. Come on up, Whitney. Uh, give it up for Whitney, y'all. Yeah, I remember when we got that story at Waverly. Uh, it was probably about two weeks ago or so. We read that and we're like, probably the most traumatic story we, we've read. Um, people have opened up and kind of told us things like that, but that story was just like insane. And then literally like that prior to that night and as of that night, we never confirmed that people were here before reading their story. We just kind of assumed you bought a ticket, you'll be here, especially if you wrote a story, you'll be here. And then of course we get to your story, we read the whole thing and we go to say, hey, are you here? And nothing. And then we find out you aren't and literally myself, Corey and Corbin that, that night were all like, that's weird. I feel like if you submitted that long of a story, we knew you were with like a party of other people, like you would have yeah. been here. And then we were like, I wonder if something happened. And it turns out something did happen on your way to Waverly that night, correct? Yeah, so it's yeah uh, we were about 30 minutes halfway to Waverly. And when we were driving, the car just stopped and we had to pull over and we were stranded in Georgetown for two hours, uh, three, yeah, two to three hours. And we tried everything. We had to call the cops to try and get us to jump because we were not sure what was wrong with this car. And when I tell you it was driving and it stopped, it didn't sputter, just died. And we could not get it to restart at all. How did, obviously knowing what had happened to you in the past, what goes through your head at that point? Are you like, not again? Is it just, oh, car problems? Like, what are you thinking at that point is, is going through your head? At first, we were like, okay, maybe it just needs to, you know, cool off for a second. Um, but after a little bit and we could not figure out the problem, um, we were like, this could be a sign. Um, and it was. <laughs> We ended up not being able to come, and we finally got somebody to come pick us up at seven, right when the show started. Any problems on the way here today? No. Okay. L l thank God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We this um, this morning, I was praying. I was like, I've paid almost one hundred and thirty-three dollars two times now, and I want to come see you guys. I've been watching you guys for years, as well as my fiance. We were just hoping to God we can make it up here. And we did. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you did. Yes. <laughs> um, and then I, I mean, your story has yeah. physical yes. proof of it. I mean, not that we don't believe you, but I mean. Yeah. Um, I have this and then um, I have a big scar on my shoulder from the fence. And you believe, I'm, I'm assuming, you, you can tell me. You correlated the events that happened earlier in the night. Yes. Said, this, is, this is a hoax. It's not real. 
Do you think the car accident is related to the earlier events of that evening? Yes. What's your thinking behind it? Do you think it's because that lady that you saw heard you and was like, oh, you don't think this is real? Like, what, well, what are, what's your thinking behind that? My friends were like that. They were not big on paranormal. Um, they thought it was a hoax. They had never really had any personal um, things happen to them, but I had. And so I didn't think they were going to push it that far. I didn't think they were going to basically like threaten it. But um, that whole time, just going through the little ritual, um, I just started to get this gut feeling that we were doing something wrong. And I had never had that feeling before. I've had paranormal experiences, but they weren't like this. And I knew we were probably dealing with something we should not have. When you saw her, did it look like a, you know, like a normal person? No, I see through? saw right through her. Really? Yes. I could tell out the white dress. I can tell it was a woman. I could not see a face though. She was damn transparent. Like I knew this was not a real person. How many seconds do you think you saw her for? A good five. What? Like I turned and it took me a second to realize what was in front of us. And I screamed so loud. And then my friends finally turned around. And once they turned around and he got the car to come on, turn the lights on, she was gone. So everyone in the car. Yes, we all saw, saw her. Wow. And prior wow. to seeing her, you said there was like a bang on the rear the, of the car? Yes. There was this loud thud. The car like shook a little bit because of it. And we all turned our heads and we're like, what the hell was that? <laughs> Just how far away currently do you live from where you saw her? 30 minutes. So still, how, have you ever returned to that same place, to that same nope. bridge? Nope. I have not. Not personally. Yeah. Um, uh, out of respect, I guess, or just a fear of, I don't want that to happen again. For, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. At, at what point, I mean, you said you thought they were taking you too far, this, but did you like the, the ritual and then the, yeah. and the taunting and the diminishing of what could or could not be there? Did you try and step in and go, hey, yeah. shut up, like after, calm down? Like, yeah. After, um, I don't remember, I want to say it was Haley who said it, but after she said, oh, I bet this ghost can't do shit, I hmm. was like, hey, let's cut it there. And then that's when we heard the thud. Wow. Right on the, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then out of your judgment, do you feel as though you got the least repercussions? from that exchange? Um, I would say Haley, oddly, was the one that didn't get the most hurt. Okay. But I was definitely, I was third. Um, obviously, Kobe lost his life. And then Dalton had amnesia, was in a coma for a few weeks. Um, and I have not talked to him since. His family kind of took over and cut contact with all of us. Really? Yeah. How many, how um, many years ago was this? Uh, 2020. So okay. this November will be two years. Wow. Yeah. Where does that make you stand? Like, okay, you obviously believed a little bit before. You weren't, yeah. were you weren't, you weren't a hundred percent believer prior. You were just kind of this. Could I was. Be, you were a hundred percent believer. Yes. Um, like I said at the beginning, my mother raised me on Bobby Mackey's um, Waverly. I watched Ghost Adventures like a mother trucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've always just had this love for the paranormal. And then this happened and I've, it's a definite this time. After that, I was like, okay, if I ever was to do this, to like go on a um, overnight stay, a tour, I'm gonna make sure that we're okay, you know? Mm, of course. Have you, have you gone out ghost hunting? No, but um, I would love to. I would love to get to see the good side, I guess you could say, of the paranormal. For sure. What does your, um, you know, like other family and friends around you, do they believe it was paranormal that caused everything? No. Um, none. There's only like a few members of my family that I actually fully believe like I do. Hmm. Um, but my dad, no. He kind of was just, just like, you're stupid teenagers. Shouldn't be, you know, speeding. Yeah, but well, what about you know like every you all saw the yeah the lady yeah what, um, what what do people say about that I haven't really told that part to a mm. lot of people oh. just because it was personal um, especially after 
Um, but I haven't really like told anybody because again, how it seems, if you didn't know that we, you mm-hmm. would just think we were doing stupid shit mm-hmm. <laughs> and we weren't. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other stories of similar nature that have come out from that bridge where other people have gone there and done the ritual and seen the lady or other car accidents that have happened after people leaving? Like, Not that I know of, but um, there are, you know, some people that do say they see the lady, but not that I know of the, you know, nobody that I've known has had that bad of a reaction to after it. Yeah. But, but at the same time, like maybe they're also in the same boat. They're not telling people. True. You know, like, yeah. Like I, I always, whenever I hear stories like that, when I hear people that have gone somewhere and had something sincerely traumatic happen afterward and they don't let people know the full yeah. story around it, which I understand why, right? Yeah. It's, it's a very like, that's literally why we do this is because people do feel ashamed and awkward and people think they're crazy and then they feel just really like I shouldn't say this like no one's gonna believe me yeah but at the same time I look at it from your story could very well prevent an infinite amount of other people from doing the same thing and potentially facing the same end result absolutely Um, so that's that's why I asked like I didn't know if there's other stories of like I'm assuming it's probably going to be teenagers or young adults that are going to yeah. kind of do that thing where you hear of other stories of like car accidents happening yeah. in the area and or even prior to yours if anything had happened mm-hmm. like I don't, I don't know it's just it's one of those yeah. things where I like to try and figure out maybe there is something really sinister that has been there for decades prior yeah. and this has just been kind of like a, a repeat cycle and like I said there possibly is just no one I'm in a small ass town nobody really you know, talks about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, we it's do have rare. a haunted, yeah, it's rare, especially to that like catastrophic, I guess. Yeah. And some people don't really like, if that does happen, some people don't really think about the correlations and. Or they refuse to. Refuse they to, yeah. They refuse to, to believe that this could have been because of the paranormal. Which I've, is probably a more terrifying thought to yeah. think that something you didn't know existed or didn't really believe in or you can't see all the time cause yeah. this it's much easier to go oh he made a mistake he's a kid yeah mm-hmm. so like I, th- I do believe that that happens a lot of the time oh, yeah. where a huge reason why people don't believe is because they are afraid to yeah they're afraid of knowing that there's something else around them that they can't see that could alter yeah their life definitely yeah but I mean you were saying everyone's personalities changed after yes. that yes Kobe um he was sweet he uh, always he got into some trouble, but he was never like that. Yeah. He, like his whole persona changed. He would lash out at Haley a lot. Um, lash out at me and Dalton. Storm out of the apartment complex. Everything. And then Dalton and Haley, they were having tremendous family problems and job. Uh, and then for me, it was kind of like a mix of both. And I knew something wasn't right, but we just didn't know what was going on. Mm. Did anyone ever maybe hint at what it could have been? No, because at that point we hadn't really told anybody yet. Mm. We hadn't told what. Wow. Yeah, we hadn't told anybody what had happened at the bridge because we, those three kind of wanted to just forget it. They're like, we're stupid, you know, we didn't see anything. Um, they kind of wanted to not believe in it while I probably should have thought about it. And I was like, something's going on. Mm-hmm. But just at the time, all the problems we were having, it just did not cross my mind. Even even with all like the paranormal shows and that you'd watched and yeah, it, especially with, you know, yeah. Ghost Adventures being more of an antagonist kind of yes. portrayal. It, just for some reason, it did not cross my mind. And I'm surprised because I'm a person who truly, like, I believe in the paranormal. Have for, since I was, like, five years old. Just for some some reason, it, nothing connected the dots until after. Yeah, it's, it's such a... What, what, would you, what would you say, then, um, to someone that does want to go to a haunted location and does want to 
do a ritual and does want to antagonize the unknown, like the people kind of like me, right? That yeah. have, that have <laughs> that urge, that desire, that kind of like prove it. You can't do anything. Yeah. What's your perspective? Like, what would you say I think, to that person? I think there are different levels of antagonizing um, where, you know, you do believe, you know, but you're kind of just like, show me something. Mm -hmm. But then just something about what my friend did, just they can't do shit, you know? And like I said, you can have fun. Ghosts love, you know, playful spirits. They love the good energy. And like I said, you can antagonize if you want, but just make sure, you know, sometimes you are able for the repercussions. Oh, so do you think that was the, that was like the key word that did it just by saying like this ghost ain't going to do shit? Possibly. You think that that was what it was? Yeah. But looking back, that probably is what set it off. Cause like I said, right after my friend Haley said that we heard the thud and mm -hmm. it just spiraled down from there. Do you still feel like you're in danger? I mean, obviously no. on, on the way to Waverly Hills, you had the incidents. Yeah. Um, I don't, I didn't think the Waverly Hills thing was a threat. I think it was somebody, either past family member or just any of the good spirits were like, you don't need to go, you know? Mm. Oh, so okay. we kind of took it as, I took it as that. Oh, so you kind of took it as a, like an ancestor yeah. or something. Yeah. Having your car break down so it would prevent you from yeah. getting into an accident yeah. on the. Uh, either that or maybe getting something from Waverly. We weren't. Um, my fiance's mom actually is the one that brought that up. She was like, something doesn't want you guys going. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, just your car breaking down even further in yeah. Louisville or you get into another car accident. Yeah. Just we kind of took that as a good a good sign, even though it did suck. Mm -hmm. We were so excited to come see you guys at Waverly. Um, we took it as a sign. We were like. My, my first thought was. Uh, you didn't make it to Waverly because Waverly, they didn't want you to tell the story. <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that, was, that was my first thought was yeah. like, oh, you're going you're gonna to go on a podcast like, and more people are going to know about yeah. the story, the same story that you said you haven't really told anyone about. Yeah. So that was like what my thinking was like in terms of why would your car break down on the way there? It's because that same spirit or entity is like, no, no, no. You yeah. can't let people know about that. That's not for you to tell them. And that possibly could be it. That... That's another factor. It could have been that spirit. It was like, I yeah. don't want you to tell people about me. Yeah. You're, yeah. <laughs> I do like your thinking of it, though. Yeah. That it was, you know, a something else protecting you. Yeah. From something that could have happened. Uh, that That's definitely a good way to think, for sure. And I didn't have the feeling of whatever I had at the bridge. I, like I said, I was, like, kind of, like, mad and, you know, just downright, just horribly angry that we couldn't make it mm -hmm. but it wasn't like that it after you know we left I I felt calm I was like maybe this is a good thing especially with my future mother-in-law like helping me she was like I think this is a good thing yeah from, well, from 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 your perspective I like I would truly love to like hear what you would tell there's a, there's a decently young audience base right that yeah. listens to us watches us and all that stuff and sometimes I feel as though I'm setting a bad example, but I also <laughs> like to try and make it clear that like, I do my homework, I do my yeah. research. Like I do, even though it doesn't seem like it, I do study up. I do have yeah. books and books and books and books and books on black magic, on Wiccan rituals. Like I really do my homework on demonology and like all these different things. And like, whether I portray that in videos or not, like I do keep all that in mind. But at the same time, we've now done this tour for three weeks. And a majority of people who tell us stories are about how they challenged, about mm -hmm. how they made their own Ouija board when they were 10, or they, they like made a Ouija board when they were 15 and put their blood on it because they thought it'd be cool. And, yeah. and they do all these different things, and they antagonized, and they're, they're in cemeteries, and they're pushing tombstones over, and, and they're doing all these different things, and like they just don't think anything can happen to them. Yeah. But it's also at the same time, and like a part of it's because they watch shows where people do that yeah. or it's because they just don't believe. So I really, especially at that age, like at that young age where you don't really know what's going to happen and you can't really map your whole life out that it really is a bad idea 
for people that young yeah. to be doing something like that and then hearing your story. So like if you were to give a, a piece of advice to all to all the kids, like the, the younger, you know, under 21, under 18 people that want to do something like that, what would you say to them? Because you could very well potentially be preventing them from going something yeah. like that you went through. Do your research. Like um, prior to... We had heard some things at the bridge, but like I said, they did not. I'm sorry. I'm like at a loss for words right now. I don't know You're why. Okay. <laughs> um, just be aware of the repercussions that could come, especially if you do, I guess, try and challenge it like my friend did. Uh, anything could happen. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> you're, no, you're, you're, no, you're, you're good. It was, it was a loaded, it was absolutely a loaded question on that. Yeah. One. But like it, t I mean, to, to make a comparison, yeah. what you're talking about sounds very similar to all of the stories we've heard about Annabelle, where people come in and they challenge Annabelle. Yep. And like, you can't do and car accident on the way home. So it, yep. it sounds like you encountered something of that demonic caliber right yeah that would that wanted to cause harm yes and over a period of time yeah as uh, well um and like i said after the wreck i didn't feel it anymore so it's kind of like this whatever it was did what it wanted to do and was like this is why you don't with me mm. it i guess showed us what it could do and you know is there a, I mean, uh, did you, uh, I'm asking, did you do your research before going there or did you just kind of show up? That day, no, because, okay. you know, we hadn't planned on it. But for years, we, um, it's kind of like a small town saying of the Colville Bridge. Um, I think it had like burnt down at one point and then they rebuilt it. So we knew some of the history. But, you know, with the paranormal side of it, they, nobody really talked about it. They were like, oh, if you go do this, you might see a lady. You might see something behind you. Yeah. There wasn't much to research, you know. But we, someone created the ritual. Like, you someone found did. the ritual. So someone had to have yeah. not only created it, but had done it to a point yeah. where they got that result, which would warrant them telling people, hey, yeah. you do this. You'll see them. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder if like if there's a way to track down. I'm not sure. We who wrote that? Yeah. That's like a big thing in Cynthia. Not like a big, but all the teenagers know about it. You know. Mm -hmm. And it's been that bridge is old, and so it's not really telling who, you know, brought that to be. Yeah. But I would like to. I yeah. mean, that would be really cool to you know hear their experience and see yeah. what happened to them. Exactly. Um, or anybody who's had an experience like that. I think it'd be really cool to like actually like sit down and talk with them. Yeah, I mean, I... Because you I'd, never know. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious because like there's a high chance that people that are, are going to listen or watch this have been there or yeah. know about it or like their grandfather had been there yeah. or like their uncle had been there and maybe there is a lineage of history there that could explain why this was created because we've heard about haunted bridges. Yeah. We've heard about you know, train tracks, and we've heard about things like this, but I've never, ever, ever heard about, other than Annabelle, right, someone going to a location, challenging whatever it is, and then facing this level of repercussions. Not like an individual person, right, like Arnie Johnson, who challenged, and then he himself yeah. was possessed, but like it going after everyone. All four of us, yeah. All of you, even though you were probably polite, and yeah. the one saying, hey, let's calm down, you also served... Like, you mean? Yeah. It, and it's weird to think that the person that challenged it got out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that, you know, she didn't get what she deserved. You know, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Um, it's just odd, you know? It's. Do you still talk to her? No. Mm. Um, we talked for a little bit, and then she kind of just went on her own way, and I let her. Um, wow. There's multiple, you know, reasons to why that is. But um, she actually, like, texted me a few weeks ago. 
Um, but other than that, we haven't really talked. Um, and I haven't talked to Dalton since. That's, I mean, a lot to it. But now, I mean, now I want to go do some homework on it and see <laughs> if I can track down any, like, you yeah. know, yeah. old YouTube videos, like someone that uploaded from there, or any old yeah. stories or newspaper articles, or yeah. see how far back I can go and, and learn, the, learn the history there. But yeah, I mean, even why that lady's there. Yeah, I mean, wh- whoever's there, whatever's there is angry. Yes. And, and angry and powerful enough to, like, literally a degree I have I've never heard of other than Annabelle. Like, I mean, I can rack my brain on all these yeah. different stories, and but that is, that's something really sinister. Yes. And <laughs> I really hope that uh, anyone else that goes there hears your story and goes, yeah. let's not do this, or anyone else going to yeah. Yeah. locations that have remotely similar yes. stories yeah don't challenge um to, to that level man i sound like dan right now <laughs> i literally sound like dan rivera at you the do. warren museum just being like just don't don't challenge <laughs> i know just don't do it i know i'm maybe, a new man maybe you'll stop challenging nope <laughs> i do my homework you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> yeah well I'm really glad that you're able to be here tonight yes. and share Thank your story. You. Here, here's a here's an interesting question before you go though. Yes. You watch the videos? Yep. You've had this happen to you? Do you think I go too far? There is some moments where I'm like, okay, Elton. <laughs> like what? Give but, me one. I'm, I'm curious. Oh, I'm not, not not in a condescending manner. I'm actually curious. Oh Lord. From your perspective. Because <sighs> I didn't challenge Annabelle. You no. Know. I would we also would have been asked to leave if I did. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there's not really that like come to mind. Like I said, I don't really think you do push it too far. I think you do it. Do you think I could push it further? I wouldn't. Okay. You <laughs> could, but I don't. <laughs> Who said yes? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I think you do, like you do do it, but I think there's also, I guess, a line of respect, I guess. I'm not really sure. But you're looking at me like there's just not. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at Corey like this is amazing. Like, yeah, it's just you know opening. <laughs> Corey was, Corey was hoping boxes. for you to just so badly be like, no, you go way too far every time. You should calm down. This will <laughs> happen to you too. Where's the content then? There we go. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> amazing. That did not help. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Okay, how, how did you recover? Are you like, are you 100% mobile? Like, how, how, I'm, how are you? I'm no. not 100%. Um, I still do have trouble with my arms uh, after like 12 or 13 surgeries <laughs> on my um, shoulder wow. entirely. And then I have my wrist. Um, I spent three weeks and a day in the hospital. And then I had one surgery prior to being out of it, which was my skin graft. Uh, I spent probably a month just recuperating and then I got right into physical and occupational therapy. And um, I actually just graduated occupational, which was my wrist a few months ago, but I'm still doing like one week in therapy, but uh, I have come a long way. Um, When I first started, I could not move my arm or my fingers and now I'm functioning. (laughs) Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I do still have like some shoulder problems. Like I can't reach up really. Um, and it is weak, but uh, it's more than what I thought I would be able to do after that. Because hmm. I woke up thinking, I'm not going to have an arm. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily I did. <laughs> wow. Well, sincerely, thank you uh, for, <laughs> no, thank for you sharing for your story and being yeah. up here. I'd love to stay in touch because like, um, strangely, that later that night, we ended up meeting someone who had a really bizarre location, paranormal story. Oh, wow. And we were like, oh, we really want to go visit this place. Um, so I think... You know, in knowing what we know, I think it'd be really interesting um, for us to go there on our own accord, yeah. knowing what we know and knowing what we've heard from you and actually like visit this place in a paranormal investigation manner and see yeah. like, is there something not is there, is there still, yeah, is there still, is there still something here? And if yeah. it is, why? Um, Cause like I said, I've never heard yeah. anything like this before. And, and I think like in terms of what we do as a channel, this would be a, a like, it sounds weird, but a great place to make content. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I'd, I'd love to go visit there and maybe have you like retell your story in like a more okay. formal setting yeah. and 
And then yeah. we can really dig into it, try to figure out the story of why that lady is there, you know, why she haunts the bridge. Yes. Like who created the ritual. I would love kinda, that. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd really, I'd really love to get to the bottom yeah. of it, but sincerely, thank, thank you. And thank then you. Uh, Jenny, Jerry, can we get her money back for her Waverly Hills tickets? No. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Well, you're good. Oh, the bucket's the least we can do. Yeah. <laughs> you. The least we can do. Can we yeah, we'll get, we can get you some merch too. One more round of applause. That's a pretty heavy thing to show. Oh, that was intense. Yeah, I mean, do you guys want to see us go there and, and make a video and try and like actually get down to the bottom of this? Yeah. It's it's interesting. We've had like legitimately. I wasn't I wasn't uh, lying about that. We had another person at Waverly Hills. He told us a story about a place she, she worked at, which is one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard. And we got her, her info, and she's actually a tour guide there. So we're gonna go there uh, and, and make a video, which I'm assuming it might be moderately close to you if you went to Waverly. So I don't remember the name of the location. I have it written down and everything, but. It's it's really interesting. That's part of why we wanted to do this in person. That is exact reason. Because like, imagine how we just read her story mm -hmm. at home in our office. It would have been like, at the end of the story, we'd be like, okay, yeah. And, and it just would have ended right there. But like, to actually see you and have you sit right where I'm sitting, and like, not only hear you, but like, I can see it in your eyes. And like, you brought your 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 friend with you as well. Fiance, oh, fiance, fiance as well, um, and everyone else here can realize that like this isn't some fucking made up story. Like she, she's a real person in this room, yeah. sitting almost dead center to the whole audience. Like yeah. that to me means so much more than a fucking YouTube video mm -hmm. where someone like challenges it and they're like, oh, like, like you're you're a real person right here, and I really, really want people to understand that like yeah. as much as people want to like around with this, like I do there are like genuine repercussions that happen. So thank you mm -hmm. again for coming up here and sharing. I really, I really appreciate it. We have story number two. This will probably be our last story of the evening. I have multiple stories of the paranormal and of the occult in general. I have practiced magic for three years and have studied heavily for four. I am also a disabled veteran and I can explain how magic has helped me through my injury as well. I will limit it down to two separate accounts that have proved to me there's more to life than we fully understand. Number one, the experience that made me a true believer. Growing up, I was the epitome of the skeptic. If I couldn't see it, feel it, hear it, I didn't believe it. Now as a teenager, I was in the wrong crowd, drinking, smoking, etc. One night of heavy drinking, we decided to make a Ouija board. Literally what I was talking about earlier. Even making the dumb mistake, are you kidding me? Literally, this is what it says. Even making the dumb mistake of pricking our thumbs and putting our blood on it. <laughs> Not too bright, I know. Anyway, my friend's house was extremely haunted and let's say more than I would like to type happened that night, which resulted in a blessing ritual years later, which I will get to later. Number two, the experience that proved to me magic worked. Long story short, I evoked a spirit to semi-visible appearance and asked for help when I was in dire straits. One month later, not only did my VA disability get bumped up to 100%, which meant about $3,300 every month for the rest of my life, but I also received a $40,000 settlement due to the severeness of my injury. Mm. So we have a pretty loaded uh, question here, which we need to figure out what happened in this house yeah. that needed a blessing ritual and talk about magic and a lot more. So uh, Tyler, are you here, sir? Tyler, Tyler Briggs, you were marked in as here. Ginger? Ginger's checking. Uh, he was literally marked here. So that means he checked in. So we'll, we'll wait a moment unless he left. Now, see, what, what the hell? That's very strange. Was he never real in the first place? <laughs> yeah, he did a magic trick. He went poof. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it like 30 more seconds, but that's... He signed in. Yeah, he literally signed he in. Like, in he, he checked in and got his wristband. He checked in and got a wristband. Like, he, is, he was here at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Did you check for the bathroom? Tyler, you shit. <laughs> Jander, is he shit? Is he? 
They're checking the they, restroom they right now. They checked the girls' restroom. <laughs> That's the wrong one. Dude, this is like kind of freaking me. I'm honest. This is kind of freaking me out that the only time we've ever read a story if someone wasn't here was yours. Mm-hmm. You had a car accident. This person checked the f- in. Well, also, look, the seat next to her is empty. Oh, my God. Was there a dude sitting next to you? Was anyone sitting next to you? Did anyone have a guy sitting next to them at some point during the show that is no longer next to them? Wow. What the f- How did he get his wristband? What happened? He checked in? He was sitting over there by us. Because he was at the VIP. Tyler was in the VIP? Was that his name was Tyler. Was his name Tyler? I don't know. That's really bizarre. Okay. Well, uh, wow. I'm, I'm so, I'm so confuzzled right now. This is a real, this is a genuine real moment. We're like, we don't know what to do. Yeah. He he left, I guess. Oh, did he know? Did he know we were going to read a story? Is that, he didn't even know. So we didn't even like tell him for him to be like, oh, never mind. I don't want to go on stage and leave. All right. Uh, that's weird. No, I don't know. Oh, is that who? I don't know. That's really bizarre. Okay. What? Um, that's, wow. All right. That's weird. This is a, this is a, real, a real thing. Okay, so next time we lock the door so they can't leave. Um, <laughs> once you're checked in, you're in for the night. Why uh, would he leave? Yeah, I, I, really, I really don't know why he left. Um, okay. Do you want to read this story then, or should I read the story? Well, I can read it. You sure? Is it long? Uh, no, not really. It's, uh, they actually spaced it out really nicely. Okay. Here, you read it. You All read right, it, because that, read that it. may not make it. No, it'll, it's 100% going to go in. That's, that's freaking me out. Like, I don't get freaked out easily, and I'm like, I'm very confused right now. Like, is this dude f***ing real? No, he wasn't. Apparently, we all saw a ghost tonight. <laughs> apparently, every, apparently, a ghost... Well, you know, it, he, he gave me a book, and he said... Dude, what does the book well, say? Where's the book? Well, you know, the book just says, I'm there. not real. You well, were no, all no, dead. Well, no, the book, one of the books that he gave me, he said was written by an entity, not a real person. And whoa, was, whoa, whoa, where are the books? Where are the books? Where are the books? Where are the books? <laughs> They're right over there. Go get, go get the books. Go get the books right now. What now the f- is the last dude, time dude, I saw what them? what the f- about to happen? Yo, okay. Uh, do we all just have the most like surreal paranormal moment? Is this dude real? One, one, this means the ghost had an internet connection. He was able to get tickets. Uh, he had an ID that he showed at the front desk. He, this ghost has a working credit card and was able to write a story. And apparently the ghost, and the ghost served in the military, I guess. I don't. Okay, you found the book. And you said one of the books was written by an entity? Yeah. I think it was the black book. Okay. Yeah. What is and going on? And he also on? said he wrote notes in the books. Okay, which, well, here, you take, which one do you want? <laughs> I believe it was the black one that was written by an entity. Here, take, take the black one. Well, no, you can open it. I don't want to open it. Dude, watch us read it, and it's literally like we read something in Latin, everyone in here dies. Stop. Here, you read what? it. What? It's content. <laughs> Oh, you! Oh, oh! Y'all wanted content earlier, but not anymore. Now, when you're in danger, just me, huh? <laughs> okay, I've never, I've never heard of this before. The book that was given to us, this doesn't make any sense at all. The book that was given to us it says the the Kybalion, Hermetic philosophy, the three initiates, uh, initiates, and the centenary edition. So the one hundredth edition. Um, okay, this is. I don't know. Okay, what does this note say? Okay, so this... Oh, my God. I don't know. Dude, I, I, right, is this dude real? Like, I really... I'm so confused right now. He just... He wrote down seven things. Yeah, he, he wrote down his own notes on mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. Uh, that's, that's the main notes in here. But where's the book written by an entity? Okay, this is, this is a normal book here. What does this note say? Okay. Uh, and this is... This is the Book of the Law, Liber al vel Legis, which I'm assuming is going to be Latin. It says the Book of the Law. And this is, this is what, he, what he gave us. You might want to pitch those. <laughs> pitch what? The books. The books. Yeah. Throw, I wouldn't keep those. What do you mean pitch them? Like throw them out? Oh, I think you meant pitch them like you wanted us to do Shark Tank right now. <laughs> like, okay, uh, I'm seeking $666 for my book, uh, Liberal a la la Vegas. Okay, I'm just going to read. This is, this is handwritten. This is in the book. 
Uh, everything else in here looks normal. And then we're going to have to go to the Q&A. Uh, this is so bizarre. So this says the book of the law. This is the central text of Thelema. Aleister Crowley said it was dictated to him by a beyond human being called Iwas. A-I-W-A-S-S -S, in all capital letters. <laughs> um, who was Crowley would come to learn. No, sorry. Uh, who Crowley would come to learn was his holy guardian angel. Although the messenger of Liber Al was Iwas, each chapter is presented as an expression of one of three God forms. Nuit, Hadit, Rahor, Kut. This is a channeled writing. Any man or woman who reads this text must die within... No, sorry. Um, <laughs> it says, this is a channeled writing. Any man or woman who reads this text must come to his or her conclusion of the meaning. What the f***? Okay, so it, it says here in Latin, um, it says everyone in the audience must hold hands. Uh, the person right, in the front row must... <laughs> all right, don't read it. Okay, we're not going to read You're it. You're about to get us all cursed. Dude, I'm so... He's gone. Like an emergency? He had to leave because of an emergency? Well, no, if, if anything, security cameras would show if he was real or not. I mean, he signed his poster for his yeah. 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 like, how do you spell that? And yeah. he was like, E L I Z A. And you yeah. were like, say it again. Yo, watch, he just needed my handwriting to put a curse on me. <laughs> like, watch, that's what happened. He was like, yeah, Corey, can you draw a ghost? He even asked you a question. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> What was the what was the question? Yeah, what was this? For, for everyone that doesn't know, there's a there's a meet and greet that happens before the show, and that's where we met him. I don't, I don't, he asked why why get why would you get possessed or why? Didn't oh yeah! You said why not? Oh okay, I remember him. Wait, he was a nice guy. He didn't seem like he was gonna destroy our souls. Yeah, he seemed like a very pleasant, nice guy. Yes. To heaven? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He asked. That was his only question the entire night was, why did you, why did you get possessed? I know. Yeah, I, I kept dapping him up. So, you know, <laughs> me and him were oh, good friends. Yeah. You know what you were doing? Giving him your DNA. No, I wasn't. You gave him your fingerprints. You gave him your sweat. No. You gave just, him everything he needed to perform no, the ritual later. But it was weird that he asked for a curl of my hair, but. God. <laughs> I just want to hear a ghost do a drum solo right now. Doom, do, doom, doom. All right. I really, I really, by the way, that was the plan. I really wanted Bobby to play guitar so I could play drums for him. <laughs> yeah. You just do the Seinfeld theme song and just kill Marty. <laughs> you just killed Marty. I know. Absolutely just killed Marty with the Seinfeld bass line. Yeah, Seinfeld. We'll say that's what it was. Wait, was that not what that was? Yeah, we'll say it's Seinfeld. Oh, you did, didn't you? And thanks, you guys, for coming out to the show. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're going to grab water. We'll see you guys outside in a minute. Oh yeah, Marty, Marty's gonna come do a picture. Well, we're gonna take a picture, y'all.